English friends, welcome to my February wrap up uh, part 2. In this video, uh, I will talk about uh, the 8 works uh, that I finished in the second half of uh, February. Uh, doing the wrap ups uh, in a sort of like a vlog style helped me a lot uh, in, uh, in in evaluating the books uh, much more deeply. So let's see what I thought about these books at the time that I finished uh, them. Today is the 16th of uh, February uh, and uh, last night uh, I finished uh, Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. I have been reading this book for one and a half month uh, with uh, Alice and Loretta. Even though it was scheduled uh, for two whole months, uh, we decided to finish the book uh, earlier because the story was, was becoming more and more engaging uh, as we read it. Mm -hmm. In this book, Andy and her mother, Lara, uh, sort of like cross-fired uh, in a uh, shotgun incident in a diner. And in that instant, and Andy is shocked to find out that uh, Laura uh, knows how to defend herself and uh, she acts very cool in such situations. Uh, it is clear that Laura uh, hides uh, something from Andy and more mysterious things happen uh, as Andy uh, learn uh, there are um, there are many pieces of her mother uh, which she had not seen before and we slowly discover what happened in Laura's past uh, along with Andy. Uh, I did not know uh, that there would be a TV series adaptation of this book when I chose this as the first book to read in my Big Books But Read project uh, in 2022. It was just such a coincidence. And uh, after reading this book, uh, I cannot wait to uh, watch uh, that uh, TV series adaptation. I really loved uh, the previous books that I have read uh, from this author. Uh, she writes uh, thrillers that are not easy to read actually. Uh, most of them have uh, very gory scenes. Uh, but uh, this book uh, was much lighter on the gore. But her characters were uh, as powerful as the characters in her previous works. Uh, once more, I get more and more sucked into the story because I loved uh, or hated the characters more and more as I read. And I became uh, so anxious uh, for those characters' sakes. You really do understand uh, the characters uh, when you read uh, what they went through. Actually, the antagonist in this book uh, was the most interesting character uh, in the book. And this is the type of thriller book that I really do like. Additionally, uh, Stoughter's uh, writing style is very easy to follow uh, and uh, the book flows very easily, even though it was quite a thick book. To sum it up, uh, I also loved this book by Karen Slaughter and gave it uh, a 9 out of 10. During our chat with Alice, uh, she said that her series books are also very, very good and uh, I will try her books belonging uh, to the detective series. Today is the 19th of uh, February and uh, I finished uh, Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Uh, this book uh, was uh, a book that was uh, waiting uh, for me in my audiobook uh, application uh, library. In this book, uh, Rosemary and uh, Guy are a newly married couple uh, who finds an apartment uh, which is ideal uh, for their desires. Guy dreams of uh, being a very famous actor while Rosemary dreams of being a mother. And, and in that apartment, they meet an elderly neighbor who introduces uh, them uh, to many uh, neighbors who seem kind. But some things uh, do stand uh, a bit uh, odd for Rosemary. When she gets pregnant as she desires, uh, she realizes uh, that uh, everything is not uh, what it seems to be, both regarding her husband and her neighbors. Because this book uh, has been adapted into movies uh, twice, and I saw both of the adaptations, uh, I have to say uh, my uh, enjoyment uh, was a bit uh, decreased because I knew the plot twist at the end. I would have liked and uh, listened to this book um, with much more enthusiasm uh, to find out what, what, what really was happening uh, if I had not uh, known the plot twist. Uh, but I still uh, enjoyed uh, listening to the book very, very much uh, because uh, it was a very uh, atmospheric book. 
very eerie actually and I didn't remember all the details so the experience uh, was not uh, spoiled very very much uh, except the ending I like the writing style and the tempo and I can see why Ira Levin was a very successful author he knows how to create a story for sure and also the audiobook experience was good because uh, it, the book was narrated by Maya Farrow the actress who played Rosemary in the, in the more famous adaptation of the book. I think I will do a from pages to screen uh, video about this book. So in summary, uh, I gave this book an 8 out of 10. If you want to read the book uh, and watch the adaptation, uh, I, would, uh, I would certainly say read the book first, uh, especially for this book. Today is the 21st of February and uh, yesterday uh, I finished uh, two books back to back. The first book that I finished uh, was the book uh, that I was reading uh, for uh, 1001 Books Book Club. Uh, the Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch. 1001 uh, Book Club is hosted by Sandy at Miss Reads Reads and uh, we had a Discord group uh, in which we discussed the book. In this book, Charles is a retired uh, theatre actor and uh, a stage director. After having a very active uh, stage life, as well as love life, he decides to move a town uh, near the sea and uh, write his memoirs. Uh, in that town, uh, he meets uh, his first uh, girlfriend and the only woman whom he claims to have loved uh, in his life. To begin with, uh, this book had a very uneven and inconsistent tempo. It started very slowly, then it got a bit interesting, then it dragged on, uh, then it gradually uh, told a very curious uh, story. I could not uh, wait to read the two chapters, and after that it, uh, the tempo dropped uh, drastically again. There were uh, some qualities about the book which were uh, very, very good. Uh, it was a very good psychological study of a man who thinks uh, very, very highly of himself and also very de delusional at times. And the story uh, with uh, his uh, first girlfriend uh, and what happened afterwards uh, was very interesting. On the other hand, with the exception of uh, these two scenes, uh, I felt quite bored while reading the book. It was uh, mostly ramblings of a man who was not sympathetic at all. Uh, and also, some of the descriptions uh, were too detailed for my taste. And uh, if it wasn't uh, for the Discord group, uh, I would have probably DNF this book. But I'm glad I did not, uh, although I gave it a 6 out of 10. It was a great uh, Discord discussion. And uh, I like being in the group much more than uh, I like the book. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you, Sandy, uh, for uh, creating this uh, wonderful uh, bookish community. The second book that I finished uh, was the book that I was bud reading with Krista at Books and Jams uh, for a week. It was a historical fiction book called uh, Codename Helen by Ariel Lohan. This book has two timelines. Uh, in the first timeline, uh, Nancy is a uh, brave and uh, young uh, reporter uh, who covers uh, some activities of the uh, Nazi Germany uh, before World War II. She visits uh, France uh, and uh, decides to stay there first because of her uh, close friend and then of course because of her husband-to-be. The second timeline starts with uh, Nancy as having a code name Helen and uh, trying to get into France employed uh, by the English uh, government uh, to have the resistance uh, in the Nazi occupied France. She also has an additional aim uh, which is to return to her husband uh, who was in France. I previously read I was Anastasia by uh, Ariel Lohan and uh, really enjoyed uh, how she played with the timeline in that book. It was the same for this book actually. I really liked uh, how she structured her uh, timeline in this book too. Uh, and also uh, the character of Helen uh, was uh, a very uh, impressive character. She was very likable and also uh, very brave and uh, it was interesting how her uh, character changed uh, in just a few years uh, because, because of the war. 
I really uh, did like uh, some of the references uh, in both timelines about uh, their lives uh, in the other timeline. And the most significant that I liked in this book was that it had a wonderful male characters. Uh, Nancy's husband uh, is an incredibly decent man, as well as some of her male close friends. Although I previously knew that Nancy Wake actually lived and all became uh, Helen, uh, Madame Andre, and all the other code names. Uh, I was very surprised to read uh, that uh, most of the things that I thought were fictional were actually facts and vice versa. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, the saying uh, the truth is stranger than fiction is was correct, uh, especially for this book. I loved uh, body reading this book uh, with Krista. Uh, we had a wonderful discussion about the book and the characters and how uh, such characters uh, relate to our contemporary life uh, as well as, of course, the effects of World War II on the people, on the nations and everything else. So in summary, I really did like this historical fiction. I gave this book an 8 out of 10. Today is the uh, 23rd of uh, February. I again finished uh, two books back to back. Uh, the first work that I finished was a novella, Dönüşüm uh, by Franz Kafka. The English title is Metamorphosis. Uh, I listened to this uh, novella uh, as an audiobook, and uh, the narrator uh, was a very uh, famous uh, showman. Uh, in from Turkey. Uh, I have heard uh, that his narration was very very good and it really was. Uh, in this book uh, Gregor uh, one day uh, finds himself uh, turned into a bug and in the following pages we see the effects of this uh, metamorphosis on his family, on his work, uh, on his social life, on his way of thinking. I was afraid uh, that uh, this novella uh, was an overhyped uh, work. Uh, although I didn't uh, love it uh, like some of my friends did, I found uh, this work very, very interesting. Uh, the fact that uh, although Gregor was turned into a bug, uh, he never lost uh, his way of thinking as a human. Uh, the contrast between his physical needs and his reasoning uh, was very, very interesting uh, to read. And I also found the effect of this metamorphosis on Gregor's family uh, to be very uh, compelling to read. And like all of the Kafka stories uh, that I have read, uh, I found the writing style to be very impressive and, uh, and on point. I feel like not a word has been uh, wasted. All of the words do contribute uh, to the story. I will certainly continue to read more works from Kafka. Uh, my my sister-in-law has a, a short story collection uh, of Kafka, I, and uh, I I think I will borrow uh, this book from her. So in summary, uh, I really did enjoy listening to this novella, and I gave it an eight out of ten. The second book that I finished uh, was the uh, second book uh, that I read uh, for my books of Alfred Hitchcock project, The Ledger by Mary Belloc Londens. This book was adapted uh, into an Alfred Hitchcock silent movie uh, with the same name, The Ledger. Uh, this book is very heavily inspired by Jack the Ripper murders and uh, it tells the uh, story of a uh, murderer uh, whose method is very much like Jack the Ripper actually. Uh, but uh, in this book he is called The Avenger. The story is mainly uh, told from the point of view of a landlady who suspects uh, that uh, their ledger uh, is the uh, serial killer mentioned in the newspapers. First of all, uh, I found uh, this book uh, to be very, very uh, modern. I found the writing style to be very easy to understand, uh, considering uh, it was written in uh, 1913. It could have been shorter, uh, but uh, I really did like uh, the uh, slowly growing uh, suspense of the book and uh, towards the end uh, I felt very much worried for our characters. So this shows uh, that it was a uh, good thriller for me because it was written 
uh, in the beginning of the century, uh, I felt like that I was reading a historical mystery, although it was written uh, as a contemporary work. Being a fan of uh, historical mysteries and historical fiction in general, uh, I, I very much enjoyed uh, reading and the way that uh, the city of London uh, was uh, portrayed in the book. I have not uh, watched the silent movie yet because I have just finished the book, uh, but uh, I will do a separate video of, uh, in which I compare uh, the three books uh, belonging to this project uh, with their adaptations. Uh, but I saw the potential of a very uh, good uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie in this book while reading it. Uh, so to sum it up, I was very pleasantly surprised by this book, like it was the case in the book that I read uh, in January. Uh, for this project, uh, The Pleasure Garden, uh, I gave uh, The Lodger uh, an 8 out of 10. Today is the 25th of February and I finished uh, a very short uh, play that I was listening uh, in my audiobook application, T at 5 uh, by Matthew Lombardo. Uh, this play is heavily inspired uh, by the uh, autobiography uh, of Catherine Hepburn that I read last year in November for Nonfiction November. The, the play has uh, two very short acts. These two acts uh, do take in the same place but in very different timelines. Uh, Catherine Hepburn's uh, home first act takes place in 1939 uh, when uh, she is expecting uh, a call uh, from uh, the producers of uh, Gone with the Wind. Uh, to be cast in the uh, role of Scarlett O'Hara. She really needs this job after having uh, seven uh, box office failures uh, in Hollywood. Second act takes place when she's in her 80s and uh, she's diagnosed uh, with uh, Parkinson's disease. It takes place uh, days after after she has been an ex she has been in an accident because of this illness. She reminisces about her uh, successes, uh, her past. Uh, and uh, also uh, a little bit about her uh, life uh, with uh, Spencer Tracy. I am very glad that I listened uh, to this uh, play because uh, the actors who originally played her uh, in the stage play uh, voiced uh, the uh, audiobook and her voice uh, sounds uh, just like Catherine Hepburn. It was sort of like listening to Catherine Hepburn talking. And I'm sure uh, she was also very uh, good uh, in the stage performance as well. Uh, but I have to say, uh, reading uh, the autobiography in November sort of ruined uh, this uh, play for me. Because uh, I knew most of the things that uh, she talked about uh, uh, in, the, in the play. And also, uh, it was uh, too short for my taste. Uh, so uh, I gave uh, this stage play. A six out of ten. Today is the 27th of uh, February and I finished uh, Nine Coaches Waiting by Mary Stewart. Uh, I read this book uh, for the uh, retro romance readathon that is hosted by Storm Reads. This book was a romantic suspense book uh, published in 1958, so uh, it was certainly published before 2000, which was the only condition uh, for joining this readathon. Uh, after putting this book on my TBR, uh, I heard uh, Kate Howe uh, mention this book as a really, really good gothic suspense book. So I was very excited to read it. In this book, Linda, who has been orphaned uh, when she was a child and then raised in an orphanage uh, in England, goes to work as a governess for, a, for an underage uh, count uh, in France. When she comes there, uh, she notices uh, that uh, there is something strange uh, with the uncle and the aunt uh, who takes care of the little count but she cannot place uh, what exactly is that and uh, when the uh, handsome son of uh, the uncle uh, comes uh, her feelings uh, her feelings towards the family changes although very suspicious accidents uh, do find uh, the little count Philip I think Kate was on point about how good this uh, book was a, a gothic romantic suspense book. It was written uh, very well uh, and uh, although it had uh, the many cliches of gothic uh, books, uh, 
the story was constructed really really well and up to a very significant point in the book we cannot really be sure if the suspicions are true or or the man uh, that she loves uh, is to be trusted or not i thought some of the events in the first half of the book uh, could have been shorter but the gradually increasing tempo in the second half uh, made me read the book very very uh, fast especially loved uh, the relationship between uh, the little comte flip and his governess and our heroine linda also i i really did like the fact uh, that uh, the secondary characters uh, were also uh, three-dimensional characters which made the mystery uh, even harder to figure out so in summary i gave nine coaches waiting by mary stewart an 8 out of 10 and i will read more books from the extensive uh, works of uh, mary stewart in the future those were the eight works uh, that i finished uh, in the second half of february uh, please comment down below uh, have you read any of the books that i've mentioned in this video and if you're a new viewer first of all welcome uh, please like and subscribe hope to see you very soon bye As for Turkish word of the day, since one of the books that I've read uh, was titled uh, The Sea, The Sea, I thought sea should be the word of the day. Sea means deniz in Turkish and deniz is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.